Hi everyone. Uh, this project is about gear detection in timba music. So to get started we definitely need a little bit of context. Uh, timba is an innovative and highly complex genre of music which originated in Cuba during the special period in the 1990s. Because timba uses uh, such unique musical techniques that aren't found in other genres in the world very much, it's been under a lot of academic study for the past 20 years or so. Gears, which are the main subject of my project, are collective patterns played by the entire rhythm section. So, to give an example using American pop music, the rhythm section, uh, like the bass, drums, guitar, keyboard, might be playing one set of patterns during a song's verse, and then collectively change to another set of patterns during the song's chorus. And we might call these the chorus gear and the verse gear. Uh, depending on who you ask, though, Timba has between 8 and 10 of these gears. So, why would detecting these be useful? Well, it takes a lot of musical training and experience to identify these gears in music, uh, and very little of the existing music has been labeled by gear in a way that's usable for database research. Automatically doing this labeling opens the possibility to do high-level research up to more people who have less training, and also creates the potential for future more database research. Also, uh, a data set of music with gears, gears identified would make a future project that I've been planning for quite some time a, a lot easier to approach. The preparation of this data set was quite a bit more of a task than I was expecting it to be. Um, I wanted to choose songs from a diverse set of artists so that the resulting model would generalize well on future data. Um, then I had to choose representative songs from each of those artists uh, and get high quality versions of those. I split each song into two beat long chunks of audio um, and categorize those chunks manually by listening through the songs. Um, I did then validate my classification uh, of the chunks by submitting them to a couple of peers in the field. Um, I chose to start by using two broad categories of gears instead of the full nine classes. Um, but one issue that came up here was that different artists used very different proportions uh, of gears in their songs from each other. These ratios ranged from 10 to 1 to nearly 1 to 1 of the two classes. So in order to have balanced classes, I ended up having to leave about 40% of my labeled data unused. Because each song is a different tempo, uh, and therefore each two-beat chunk is a different number of milliseconds long, um, I thought a good approach would be to render a spectrogram of each chunk with the same dimensions, same pixel dimensions, uh, and use a convolutional neural network to classify those images. Once I prepared all my data, uh, it became pretty clear that this was not an easy problem. I've included five randomly chosen examples from each class here, and you can probably agree that, at least visually, it looks like there's quite a bit more variance within the classes than there is between the classes. My first CNN, which I ran with 400 data points, didn't perform that well. Uh, I got an accuracy only barely better than random chance. So I spent some hours listening through some more songs and labeling some more data. Uh, and I retrained uh, on 600 samples, and this significantly improved, improved my performance. To get some context, I asked four experts to do the same task, which was to classify 20 examples. Um, two expert musicians I got uh, who I explained the class system to verbally, and two subject matter experts in Timba and only one out of those four managed to get a score above 50%. So on the one hand, the model does surprisingly well compared to human experts on the topic, but on the other hand, this points out a really relevant point about how humans would approach this task, which I'll talk about in a moment. So how could the model do better? Uh, for one, more data is a really obvious solution. Not only is 600 data points a very small uh, data set to expect to train an accurate image classifier on, but the fact that the accuracy between 400 and 600 samples improved by 28% suggests that this may well be uh, the most effective way forward. Also, lumping these gears into two broad categories is technically correct as far as the academic analysis is concerned, but as we saw earlier, the variety be between those two classes, um, or sorry, within those two classes is huge. So this could be reduced very effectively by breaking the chunks into the much more specific nine classes. Lastly, um, as I realized when the experts I asked did worse than random chance on the task, humans use a lot more than two beats worth of context to do this 
kind of classification. And so I'd like to try retraining the network uh, on eight or 12 beat long chunks still labeled by the middle two beats. Uh, I want to thank everyone for your attention, following me down what I realize is a pretty obscure rabbit hole. Uh, so if you have any questions, uh, comments, or ideas, or want to hear about my future projects um, that I plan to do in the field, I'd love to hear from you. Thanks.